So yep. let's get right into it. Let's get into the first tenet of abolitionism, which is abolitionism is biblical. Yeah. So, well, I think that one just right off the bat is is one of the things that pro lifers are very adamant about saying we don't need to be that. We can be. Yeah. We can. We can just leave the Bible out of it. I'm going to prove to you to your satisfaction that human beings yeah. should be protected without the Bible. You know, that's yeah. something in, in a, a lot of Christian apologetics now. But so kind of counterintuitive. Yeah, what, what do you think about that, Russell? They will actually be explicit about that. Like, yeah. um, and, and we probably should have mentioned this earlier on, but like the five tenets are actually chosen or selected or <coughs> discovered or whatever you say uh-huh. because they are like, these are five things that we're going to believe that are different than five things that pro-lifers believe. Right. Yeah. And so way back in 2010, 2011, when I was starting to think, okay, what does it look like to be a Christian in a culture that kills its children? Yep. I was studying pro-lifers and I was, whether I was reading like Scott Klusendorf or even like Randy Alcorn or Lila Rose or any of these people, students for life, looking at the different organizations, they seem to be all very willing and ready and almost proud to say, you know, you don't have to be biblical mm-hmm. to be a pro-lifer. Like you, you don't have to argue from the Bible. In fact, you probably shouldn't. So I kept on seeing that everywhere. Like you should leave the Bible out of like debates about abortion. You should be able to convince someone that they should become a pro-lifer mm-hmm. without the Bible. And I, and just at that very basic level, I was kind of like, I, I don't want to do anything mm-hmm. without the Bible. Like this yeah, is weird. Yeah. I'm a Christian. I believe the Bible is the word of God. It's like the most powerful, best, beautiful thing in the world. Why would I leave that out? Yeah. And so a, that's where it started. It's very piecemeal type of worldview building type of thing. It's like uh, I can hang this painting without a wall to put it on type yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, doesn't, yeah. that doesn't work, though. You actually have to have a foundation to put yeah. that in, to plug that into. And I think that a lot of pro-lifers, just to give them this incoherency, but like I think this is what they're doing, is like they think themselves personally they believe the Bible, and that might be why they're motivated to fight abortion or something like that. But as a movement or as an ideology or as a strategy, leave it out. Mm -hmm. Like, like you don't need, you can get to everything you need to get to in the pro-life debate without the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm kind of like, I don't think you can even get murder is wrong without the Bible. (laughs) Like, I don't understand what you guys are talking about. So, and another reason I think that the pro-life movement is is apt to say we're not biblical is because and it's another tenant later but they, they want a big tent yeah they want lots of people who aren't biblical to be a part of the pro-life movement yeah. and so they don't put that up because it'd be like a stumbling block um, so in their desire to approach the issue with like secular compatriots and all that kind of stuff yeah. they leave the bible out of it and for me and i think for lots of people now it's kind of like you just shelved Mm-hmm. The entire thing. Yep. Yeah. They want to like invite in everybody. Pet- pedophiles for life and <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Pedophiles for life <laughs> is, uh, I think they lost their 501c3 status. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Secular pro life. No, it's not pro-life. that far off, honestly. It's like transgenders and all this different stuff or and, like yeah, have pro life organization. Yeah. No, I remember uh, when the SBC stuff was going down back in June, I was uh, in an email communication with a professor at a, a Louisiana uh, SBC, SBC university. And I was talking to him and he's like, yeah, no, I've been, I've been very pro life. I'm very active with Louisiana right to life. And so I just went on real quick and I, I, uh, I Facebooked Louisiana right to life and they had brought in a transgender pro-lifer to train their youth. Mm -hmm. in how to like be pro-life and i emailed this this sbc you know ethics professor back saying here's the group who you're so proud to associate with Mm -hmm. you know having transgender people come in to train their youth like, yeah. What are you doing, dude? Yeah. You know, but it's weird. We're, at the people, church, people are going to be super mad at me for that quote. It's not that far off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For life. yeah. But it hey, was a bit yeah. of a tongue in cheek. But yeah. from what James said, I yeah. mean, there's the it, it is a movement that is that is OK with by and large, OK with uh, mutilating the genitals of children. So, yeah, um, that is, I, I don't feel too bad. about yeah. it. And and uh, to be fair, like. There's a weird thing that I've seen among pro-lifers where if there is someone who's like an atheist mm-hmm. or a homosexual or in just something that's yeah. not like, you know, cookie cutter Christian, they want to put them on stage. Yeah, they want to prop them up especially. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and you're like, what what's going on here? Yeah. And it's it, and it's going to get into the fact that they're not gospel centered and so on and so forth, obviously. Yeah. But um, 
but but to cap that off, I think that we need to say the opposite view, like pro life, like when abolitionists, we would say we are biblical Mm -hmm. pro lifers would say we are secular. Yeah. And like, we are very upfront about being biblical and they are very upfront about being secular. Mm -hmm. Now they'll also try to say we're not secular. You know, if, if they're speaking to a church, if they're speaking to a church or they think it's going (laughs) to affect the bottom line or something, Right, but they are wanting to be secular. They do go out of their way and in the process kind of give up the whole game. Because mm-hmm. yeah. if they adopted a secular worldview, which is, yeah, devoid. Well, it's 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 they get from the culture their reasoning for opposing abortion a lot of the times. Like they'll yeah. go, oh, there's the cultures they'll go on these crusades for you know the right to homosexual marriage or the right to all these different dumb issues and things like that that aren't really issues, and they'll take, oh, okay, well they're going on this crusade for human rights, and this is why we should do it because. Yeah. The culture's reasons for things like yeah. oh, equal treatment yeah. for other people. Yeah. It's not what is the biblical worldview? What are human beings? Why should we protect them? What mm-hmm. is the civil magistrate's responsibility to them? Yeah. Uh, answering those questions biblically. Instead, it's let's get our answers for how to do cultural engagement from the yeah. culture and, 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 and get those ideas from the culture. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why you'll see like stuff on, on social media from pro life groups saying like, Medication abortion is wrong because it it hurts the trees because of the the yeah. the, the chemicals in the water you know. Well, because I think in their attempt to be secular, they attempt to appeal. To, they think, what do secular people care care about? Yeah, mm-hmm. I can't remember what it was, but I, there was a Students for Life email that just I got like yeah. a few days ago, and it was like doing that. Oh. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it's like it was like yeah. appealing to you know critical race theory or something. It's just kind of like what they're just trying to be relevant. They're trying to be attractive, and they're always looking for common ground. Mm-hmm. Yep. But uh, not to be fair, there is the actual ground that's out there. Yeah, people are all made in the image of God. There is yeah. a natural law yeah. written on their hearts, and so on and so forth. But they don't like mm-hmm. presuppose that as common ground. Yeah, they look for common ground with whatever the secular world is happening to value at the time. And, and they they'll appeal to that. They'll even do that. Like the better ones will do that against their better judgment. They'll equivocate on things like what are human rights. Like they'll they'll be talking to a transgender student or something like that, and they'll be like, "I believe that the preborn child has rights to live in the same way that you have rights as like a trans transgender." And it's like it's totally equivocating on because their whole mindset behind what it like what is transgender's rights is I should be able to go into somebody else's like the female bathroom when I'm actually a biological man or something. Yeah. And totally equivocating on that stuff, allowing, you know, that person to have that entire worldview smuggled in because they don't want to actually, you know, actually say, no, we're actually very much opposed. Yeah. Um, You have a worldview that is destructive of human rights. I have a worldview that actually makes sense of it. Yep. You need to change your worldview. Yeah. yeah. They're smuggling in a worldview that actually undermines themselves. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. As Francis Schaeffer wrote, and I think it was a Christian manifesto, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but he wrote, you know, we've got to stop seeing things in, in bits and pieces. We've, we've got to see things as, totals. A, as totals, a whole worldview against a whole worldview. Mm-hmm. Yep. This worldview is causing, you know, a flood of loss of, of humanness, yep. as, as Francis Schaeffer put it, and the Christian worldview is the answer. Mm-hmm. And so you can't just you know, take a, a good policy issue and plug it into this worldview, which is destroying humanness. You've yeah. got to bring the whole worldview, the right worldview into conflict with the whole wrong worldview. Yeah. And if we're not doing that, like you said, we're losing the whole game. Yeah. We're winning yeah. one issue, but we're losing the whole game. Yeah. And so yeah. we've got to be biblical. Um, yeah. And I think one of the verses that points to that is second Corinthians ten five, which says we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Yeah. I think the key word there being every, yeah. mm-hmm. right? So there, there aren't spheres where we can rely on on thought independent of God's word. Mm-hmm. God's word is the foundation um, for everything that we need to be doing, and that's yeah. how abolitionists view it. Abol- abolitionist abolitionism is drawn from the pages of God's word. Yeah. Everything and, about it. And to correct you, Francis Schaeffer didn't say that in Christian Manifesto. He said that in every book <laughs> he wrote. It was like yeah. one of his. Mm-hmm. The, you know, he was always that was, banging. That was the, a drum he pounded. Yeah, he 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 was always banging that drum, and uh, Francis Schaeffer was, of course, very uh, significant ser- mm-hmm. person. I was reading back in the day, but there, yep. there was an early meme, sort of a abolish human abortion meme. Is like we're not just trying to destroy abortion, but the yeah. worldview mm-hmm. that, that undergirds possible. it yep. makes yeah. it possible in the first place, and. You know, you can't do that mm-hmm. with a secular worldview. Yeah. 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 And I mean, Schaefer had a lot of um, so, some de- departures from Van Til, but he was, uh, you know, 
taught by Van Til, and Van Til's mm-hmm. thing was um, the Bible is authoritative on everything for which right. it speaks, and moreover, it speaks of everything. And so um, this kind of view, I think people will want to jump on that and say, yeah, Schaefer's right about that, or Van Til's right about that. But then guys like Scott Klusendorf, who I know would have been are a fan of of Francis yeah. Schaefer right. will say things like you can't fly a 747 using the Bible. Um, and so <laughs> when we say we need to bring every thought captive when it comes to legislation, when it comes to the way that we're approaching ending abortion, yeah. he's like, don't punt to scripture, like leave, leave scripture out of that. Yeah. And it's um, acceptable and republished by like the gospel coalition yeah. or together desiring with God. Desiring God. Yeah. I mean, it's in, and, and it's so, it's so not, you can't be that way or argue that way about anything else yeah. mm-hmm. except for, the pro-life movement has, it is a tenant, mm, yeah. be secular, go about this, this way. It's the, it's the yeah. key. And, and that, that quote there that you can't fly a 747 using the Bible, it, it paints so clear what they're doing, right? They're trying to carve out this little piece of their life politics mm-hmm. where we're going to operate apart from scripture that explicitly, oh, explicitly yeah. says that. Oh, yeah. And so we're trying to do this apart from scripture, but again, every thought captive, yeah. political yeah. thought needs to be taken captive to Christ. Yeah. And and the thought of 747 pa, pa, uh, pa, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, pilots needs to be taken captive too cuz if someone is, you know, flying planes or something like that, the biblical worldview has something to say about the morality, about how they conduct themselves. Yeah. Uh, whether or not they have hatred for their fellow man in their heart is relevant to flying a 747, yeah. whether they're going to be negligent at the wheel and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um I you know, we I would prefer to have a Christian behind the wheel of every single 747, you sure. know, because it's relevant. Yeah. You know, it, it's and always even, relevant. And even the non-Christians to be basically following a Christian worldview when they, mm-hmm. when they fly, yeah. um, up is up, down is down and so on. But, yeah. It was, but, it was very relevant for the, uh, the hijackers, uh, who ran into the buildings in 9-11. Yeah. Yeah. That worldview would have changed a lot. So yeah. it does have something to say about all that. And, and the, the thing, the quote is just weird. Mm-hmm. It's like, we're saying, how Big do you, category or- how do you, yes, it's a shift. I mean, how, how do we fight and remove evils? Yeah. The Bible doesn't say anything about how you fight and remove evils. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. It's just crazy. <laughs> it's crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Interesting to all of this is how sort of acceptable it is. Mm-hmm. Like I was a member of a church that was very, I think committed to the word of God, Mm -hmm. like preaching through the word of God, saying the word of God as an authority, so on and so forth. But then they would like hire the center for bioethical reform to come in Mm -hmm. or they would, you know, do 40 days for life. And ultimately that pastor opposed abolitionism. And one of the things he disliked was our criticism of the, of the pro-life organizations. And as this was happening, um, just this little, little anecdote, uh, they had, what was the group called? Justice for All. Mm-hmm. So Abolitionist Society of Norman had started up in Trinity Baptist Church and to sort of like combat that, the elders were like, well, we're going we're gonna to invite some other group in mm-hmm. to train our people. And uh, so we had about 80 people in the church that were going to the Abolitionist Society meetings where we were basically arguing we've got to be biblical. It all flows from the word of God. And then on Sunday afternoon, they're going into Justice for All. And it's like, I walk into this thing and there's a guy at the front of the room saying you need to find common ground with secular people, which means don't begin with the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there like looking at this and I'm like expecting the elders of that church, the pastor, the youth pastor Mm -hmm. all to be like, man, we made a big mistake. And they're like, he's right. Mm -hmm. It's like, what in the world? It's just, it has been a tenant. It has been that strong. It has yep. been preached for 45 years or however long they've been preaching this stuff yep. in the pro-life movement and just sort of like mindlessly accepted. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the church has followed the lead of the pro-life groups on that. Yep. Like pastors and churches and Christians who know better have, yeah. like you said, just kind of blindly said, well, these are the political experts, so we're going to go with what they're saying, or these are the, these are the apologetics experts, yep. so we're going to go with their, what they're saying. And that's one of the awesome things about the abolitionist movement is it's not – that it's not people you know who are coming this from a political expertise background and know how to be maneuvery or from even from an apologetic expertise but people who know yeah. the word of god yeah and bringing that to bear on politics on apologetics on all of it yeah yep. so yeah and and there is one there's one area where we have common ground with the unbeliever and that is that they're made in the image of god and they know god and they're suppressing that and yep. so uh, an apologetic that starts with Let's accept one of these things that you can't justify, and let's try to get more in because you already accept this thing. 
instead of going, no, you can't justify that. You can't justify human rights, your own right to life, mm -hmm. your own uh, claims to reliable, uh, you know, scientific discovery or anything like that. You have a worldview that is destructive of consistency in nature yeah. and destructive of any kind of order. And that doesn't, I'm not going to give you something that would not make sense with that worldview. It's just going to get confused and muddied and it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, instead of challenging that, they accept it and they give someone something that is arbitrary itself, like human yeah. rights to somebody who doesn't know how to make sense of yeah. it um, is absurd. And I, and I think, of course, we're not going to see any significant change in the culture mm -hmm. without the word of God. 